We good Random, now? you're on. Yep. All right. Welcome back to the number one, actually number two podcast in the whole world called Detour Ahead with your hosts, Riley and Colo. And today, myself, Random Candor, the infamous, the amazing, the infamous. Uh, the infamously amazing. Coming in. Yeah, the infamously amazing. <laughs> uh, podcast guest is going to be your guest of honor today on this episode. Well, welcome. Welcome back. Or welcome for oh, the yeah. first time. That is the most wholesome intro we've had <laughs> since we've started. <laughs> Only getting better, baby. No, I, th- I, I think it peaked when, when Jason did his intro. I think that was that was cream of the crop. Yeah, that's fair. It is the show where we come. It's It's real. <laughs> anyway, let's get this podcast started. Do you guys want to do small talk or do you guys want to uh, just jump right into the topic? I guess small talk. I'm vibing. All right, what have you been up to? Been How has this around. past week gone? Been hanging around, watching a lot of YouTube, playing a video games or two. Which games? Mostly uh, Pokemon Ultra Moon. And then uh, today I started playing a Smash Remix, which is a hack of uh, the original Nintendo 64 Smash Bros that adds like a bunch of characters and stages and shit. Shit, which characters do they add? That's my shit. Um, I know I'm playing as... Uh, I played as Mewtwo when I was playing last, so I know he's in the game. I know Conker is also in the game, because that's what ha- made it ca- catch my eye, is they put Conker in the game. That's and there's dope. there's a bunch of other characters that I don't quite remember. And it plays the same as the 64? Uh, there might be some tweaks in terms of gameplay, but like I'm not... I'm not an expert. I just don't want to say yes or no because I'm really not certain. Fair enough. Then not, not, nothing too much has been up for me for the past week. Just grinding away, chilling. What about yourself, Colo? Are you on the nofap streak? Uh, no. <laughs> no, uh, I, broke, I broke that day one. I'm sorry. Did you start or intend to start? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Depends. Yeah, I kind of like thought about it and then I failed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I went I went hard last year. I made it like twenty days. Damn. Nice. Yeah, I made it like twenty days, and then I was just like, "Nah, I'm out. I can't do it." Do you have any? Even they get through my shift at work. Ooh, gross! <laughs> Idiot! <laughs> Idiot! Aren't you a babysitter? No, <laughs> you. No. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Uh, other than that, I've not been doing much, just kind of working and spending money on Amazon that I don't need. On stuff I don't yeah, need. You, you, uh, you don't need the money. <laughs> yeah, that's why he spends it on Amazon. I, I do. I'm kind of broke right now because of said thing. But I bought, uh, let me see if I have a picture. I can send it. Um, I bought this Wooper plushie, but it's like a cute Wooper. Is that like a Pokemon? Yes, it's a Pokemon. Mm. How hap- I sent it in Detour Head chat. Um, mm. Princess! Look, look how happy! It's adorable! I love it. Let's get shiny, out of there. It's a shiny Wooper. Who's Princess? <laughs> she's, she's the puppy that my mother is dog sitting. That I have to let sit in my room because if not, she'll scratch at the door and ruin the door. She keeps like getting into trash and shit. Anyway, yeah, so I bought a Wooper plushie. It's a shiny Wooper with a little heart on its chest, and it's amazing. Why did you do this? Uh, Impulse buy. I saw it and bought it. Jeez. <laughs> Are you like yeah. a, uh, a plushie type of guy? Yes, I have way too many plushies. I don't know where this one's going to go because I'm basically running out of room. So I'm going to have to find a spot for him. But but yeah, not much. Just work and spending money. That's about it. Good. Money in, money out. As long as it's balanced. Somewhat. <laughs> money, money, money. Money. That's right. Riley, how's <laughs> work been? It's been all right. You know, I've been... Making the computers dance, as is my job. 
Jeez. <laughs> You're an animator? <laughs> if only. If only I did something that cool. No, I'm, I'm an IT guy. I gotta, I gotta make those computers go. So that, that's different from before in the call center, right? Um, no, I work. I still work in the call center, and I still do calls for some time during my week. But now my primary job is I'm the IT tech. Sick. So that's that's like a promotion, right? Yeah. That's good. good for you. I didn't know about that. Yeah, no, I I even have my own <laughs> office. How how sick is that? I'm a, I'm a I thought boy. you were still soliciting information from random people online. Well, <laughs> maybe maybe for a few hours out of the week, but for most of it, I'm fixing computers in my that, office. That's mine. I have an office. That's his side hustle, Colo. Exactly. What stealing information from people? Yeah, it's a very. Uh... Very rewarding and lucrative. Riley, at last time you have your own. Who do you sell the now. information to, Riley? I don't Russians, actually steal people. Chinese. I don't actually steal people's information. So this is all satire, just to make this like, extremely clear. <laughs> <laughs> this is. Uh... Do your coworkers listen to Detour Ahead? Is that why you're like covering your tracks now? I mean, they could. They they are aware that I have podcasts. It would not be hard for one of them to follow the rabbit hole down. <laughs> but understandable. Uh... He is officially endorsing that he is a masturbating babysitter. That is true. And canon. Yep. That's that's canon to Riley lore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've heard you talk about the kid a couple times. Not very nice. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I'm pl- I'm pl- <laughs> Riley is not a babysitter. Riley is not a babysitter. <laughs> Jesus. Don't take my podcast yeah. away. A- anymore. Man. Y'all are I don't fucked think up. any sane human being would let you around their child. Anyway. Can we just, like, can, instead of Twitter, Twitter's stupid. Can we talk about, like, working? I, I, yeah. I want to hear about random Candor's job history and also Colo Chu's job history. Oh, absolutely not. No. Well, not I'm without good. getting into too deep of a detail. I'm just, I'm just curious as to, like, what types of jobs y'all have worked throughout your journey. I've worked, like, three different jobs, Riley. It's not it. It's not exciting. What kind of jobs? Um, I've done Vaguely. lifeguarding, grocery store, and delivery driver. Nice. That's it. Delivery yeah. latest. Yes, that's what I'm currently. For like uh, Uber Eats and stuff. Uh, no, like packages. Oh, oh, like like uh, UPS and stuff. Yeah, UPS. Uh, UPS, Amazon, FedEx. That sort of thing. Driving around in a van, dropping off packages that people were too lazy to go to the store and buy themselves. Good old, good old postman Colo Chew coming around with the packages. <laughs> do, you, do you ever get your own packages? Uh, no. I deliver in a different city than I live. Uh, on purpose? No, not on purpose. I... If I wanted to deliver my own packages, I'd have to go to a different state. I'd have to basically transfer to a different station hmm. in a different city, and then I would be able to deliver my own packages, but it's complicated. And really no gain. Oh, no, it would be I would be doing the exact same job, just in a yeah. different area. So there's no point in leaving... <laughs> Uh, would there be any level of convenience to being able to deliver your own packages, you think? No. No, not really. You wouldn't I'd have give to leave myself it at, five stars every day though. You wouldn't have to leave <laughs> it outside your you wouldn't have to leave it outside your front door if you left your if you like left your house and it came while you were gone. It, I think the you, only benefit would be if I if my if my house was like if I was passing my house on my route, I would be able to like just stop for, for like a break, go get food and stuff, but that's really about it. Like, if I gotta go to the bathroom or something, I'd just be like, oh, I'll just swing by the house. But not worth the headache of transferring. Oh, absolutely not. Also, if I if I come home, I'm probably not gonna leave again, which might also cause some problems. So mm. <laughs> you just won't be able to will yourself to like get up and get the fuck out of there. No. <laughs> See, this is why it's important that there shouldn't be any bathroom breaks. I think Amazon is doing it right. <laughs> yep, the, the the Amazon warehouse workers 
I really they're they're the prime example of how the workforce should be in our society. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad I don't work in package warehouses. I've heard Amazon is awful. What types of jobs have you worked, Random? I've worked sales, and that's about it. And then just been in school for a long, long time. You're a salesman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit of that no, sales uh, blood in you? That was the X, very transient. I, I can't, can't be asked to convince people to do stuff. Random can't door. Nice. Hey, hey! Shut the fuck up! <laughs> it wasn't bad. It, it wasn't bad. <laughs> if I wanted puns on this podcast, we would have brought Gingy back for another week. <laughs> Think of a permanent yeah, co-host, but he's not allowed to say anything unless it's a pun. He's only allowed <laughs> to speak in puns, like he's a fucking like fairy tale character. <laughs> <laughs> we will accept rhymes as well. <laughs> puns and rhymes, yes. God, that would be a disaster of an episode. You can only we have to do okay, one of these days we, we get, we do get an like a famous episode. celebrity we get like a famous celebrity guest who like knows us just enough. Well, we'll I'll invite fucking Florian Himsel on Detour Ahead, and I bet he'll do it. And we'll just have Jinji make puns and rhymes the whole time and not acknowledge that it's happening. <laughs> 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 Real will happen. Not even just speaking puns, just speaking rhymes the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it would get, at some point in time, it would get really, really hard to do so. And it, the the entire episode will just fall apart at some point, but I feel like that's what we got to do. Probably like two minutes in. <laughs> that, would, that would be pretty legendary. That would be pretty sick. What about yourself, Riley? What's your, your work history prior to the call center, I guess, since we've gone over that one? Mm, nothing. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I never got jobs while I was in high school. I threw out a couple applications here and there. I think I did like one job interview, but I, mm. nothing ever stuck when I was uh, that young. Um, but then when I got out of high school, um, I went through a large uh, depression dip. Um, high school ended mm-hmm. early uh, because of COVID. Uh, that was my senior year, which is like a, a, a hella shitty time for COVID to happen. Yeah, seriously. Uh, <laughs> so my senior year was cut short. Um, I struggled to pass through senior year. Um, there was mm-hmm. a there was a point in time where it was put into question whether I would graduate, and my mother was like, "Not gonna be cool if I didn't graduate." Mm-hmm. So it, it all kind of like piled up, and that was like. It was like the worst streak of depression I've ever gone through. It was like between like April and uh, July uh, when I got this job. It was like a, a very dark time. Then like my mother, my mother started complaining again that I don't have a job. Uh, so I went and I applied for a couple things, and I saw this call center, and it was advertised as like the name of the client we were calling rather than the name of the call center, and it was like a name I recognized. So I was hmm. like, oh, this this seems interesting. And I applied to it and I got it. And it's just been like, that's my job now. Like, it's I guess I have this like weird fucked up sense of loyalty where it's like it's hard for me to imagine leaving because like I know everybody and like I'm so acquainted with the building and like it, it feels like a place where I want to be. The problem hmm. is the pay is shit. <laughs> Even like now? unless you're unless unless you're really high up, the pay is garbage. What's the hourly, if you don't mind me asking? Um, uh, currently, I make twelve an hour. I'll get a one dollar raise in about a month because I've had like a certain amount of time with my condi- with my position. But even then, like thirteen bucks an hour, it's like not awful, but not great. <laughs> oh no, I know exactly what you mean. Um, at the grocery store that I was working at prior to delivering stuff was eleven fifty. It was rough. Plus tips. Plus tips. No, no, no tips. <laughs> you don't dip. You don't tip your bag boy. <sighs> no, they no. Is that a Canadian thing? Yeah. Damn. No, we if don't. On, if only color was Canadian. <laughs> it's a meme. But yeah. uh, I guess Riley, I did uh, say in the past that I do work in in mental health, so that that. Uh, History is not going into the void. 
that's good good stuff to overcome that and remain at your job and rise through the ranks good for you yeah what's uh so do you do you ever negotiate for uh salary increase or is that i guess i suppose i suppose i could but it's not like i guess nothing's impossible they had the power to do anything if like they really want to but like the way the pay is set up is like extremely structured Hmm. so it's like hard to like break out of that like they're very set on their rates for like certain things in certain positions uh so to ask for a raise would be like them bending over backwards so it feels a bit more awkward which i'm sure is intentional because capitalism and money yeah how do you know that they're set in their ways um, that's just how I've always had them described. Like everybody has like an everybody in said position has like an exact pay for that said position, and that pay is not really changed in any circumstance except for like overtime. I mean, that's fair. That's how a lot of places are. Um, yeah, that's how a lot of places are, though. Like each position gets its gets a set pay, and then true. But it sounds like Riley is the go-to IT guy, so there's some power there. Riley, always, break all the computers. It's always yeah. more than to, to hire someone <laughs> and get them acquainted and all that stuff, so... Riley, make yourself needed. Break all of the computers. You're the IT guy. You can fix them. I'll, br- like, I'll break oh, them and I'll fix them. Oh, your computers aren't working? It's going to cost a little extra for me to fix them. <laughs> It's in Walt Kills Gale. I, I kill the computers, <laughs> and then and then they need me. You see your boss. You see your boss coming down with a clipboard that says "Riley, you're fired," and you're like, "Do it, do it, do it!" And everybody starts breaking all the computers. <laughs> <laughs> do it, Jesse. <laughs> and then you just smugly smile at your boss as he walks up to you. He's like, "Oh, still like gonna fire me, bro?" Nah, you don't even mention the firing. You just go, computers look like they need fixing. I better get on that, huh, boss? <laughs> not, not even mention that, just stare him in the eye and say, computers look, look like they need fixing. And then don't break eye contact. Like, hey, you want me to, you want me to take a look at yeah, this? Yeah, exactly. Don't here? break eye contact. Fix the computers without even looking at them. Just stare at your boss while fixing them all. Just dead eye, don't blink. Yeah, as imagine, you imagine the absolute fucking audacity. <laughs> the absolute Chad energy to fix a computer without even looking at it. You don't have to break them. You can just unplug them. And no it's like how cool guys out. walk away from explosions. Cool guys <laughs> b- fix computers without looking at them. That would be so sad. I want to see a person do that. Just like complete, like like take apart and like reassemble like parts of a computer, like backwards without looking at it. That would be so sick. I'm sure people could do it. Got to be a blind IT guy up there somewhere. <laughs> the daredevil of IT work. They've got Braille on all the keyboards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the problem is still that uh, you just have to turn it on and back on, <laughs> off and back on again. But you can't figure out the, where to turn it off because you're blind. <laughs> oh, damn it. No, the ultimate challenge. <laughs> yeah. The easiest IT solution becomes the hardest IT solution. The visual challenge. Oh god, you're describing a nightmare scenario. <laughs> so your your salary, did, did that go up whenever you got the new position in the office and all that? Did they try to say the office was your raise? No, no, no. It, they, it, it's just like, it's a, I don't know. It feels like it's a good raise, but like I'm told by like people around me, it's not enough. Where it's like I was <laughs> making eleven, and then now that I'm in the position, I'm making twelve, and then soon I will have been in the position long enough to have reached like a time based one dollar raise and get thirteen. Well, how long have you been in this position? Uh, coming up on six months, and six months is when you get the one dollar raise. Did you ever get a raise when you were in the old position? No. It, it was like the pay was fluctuating and sometimes it'd be a little higher, sometimes it would be a little lower, um, just depending on the, the client I worked for. 
Because, like, mm. obviously call centers do, like, outsourcing work and, like, they do it for, like, different companies who have, like, different rules and different ways that they pay us. So I, I kind of play hot potato and my pay fluctuates based on uh, what client I'm working for at any given time. So is it, is, like, the work, like, that you're working at, is it basically just a temp agency that doesn't actually pay you directly? It's just a, an access to you? So... Not always. It's like a weird mixture where like they, they are like directly responsible for like payroll and stuff, but they like bill the clients for the payroll. Okay. So they're kind of like the middle person. Yeah. But then I'm paid directly out of the company's pocket pocket, obviously when I'm doing uh, it work. Hmm. Oh, so you're doing it work for the agency now, in addition yes. to working in your worker role. Okay. Yes. So Colo, how much how much weed do you smoke? Yo, <laughs> the real questions. I told you, I'm good. Um, nah, not a lot. I'm not opposed to it. I'm not opposed to it. I just, I, it's not often. Oh, you don't? Then why why wouldn't you be able to leave your house after a bathroom break? Because it's comfy. I'd find something comfy to house. do. Hmm. I'd probably like turn my PC on just to be like, oh, I should probably go upload a YouTube channel. And then I'd sit here, upload a YouTube video. I'd sit here and be like, oh, this video looks, I get, I have ADHD. So if I go and like deviate from literally anything that I'm doing Hmm. that I'm supposed to be focused on, like perfect, perfect example. Uh, I'm on a podcast right now. Indeed. However, I'm also looking at cats with jobs on Twitter, Let's go, <laughs> which is what, which yes. is why I've been quiet because I found this cat who is doing pottery. <laughs> I found this cat who is doing pottery, and I'm like, he's so good. Look at him. Dude. So yeah, my Me? ADHD would not allow me if I deviate from my job. I would probably not go back just because. Fair it's, enough. Yeah. Feed, bro. Pretty sick. Riley, didn't you start like a year ago? Uh, like two years ago. Well, I guess like a year ago is when I started doing it regularly. There was like a gap between like my first two times and when I started doing it often. Hmm. Why'd, why'd you start doing it more often? Um, well, like, the first couple times, it wasn't really, like, that yeah. big of a deal. Like, I didn't smoke enough for it to be anything more than, like, a little buzz. So it's like, this is cool, I guess, but I'm not really going to concern myself with it or spend money on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I had a, a kind of group of friends that came into my life where I had, like, easier access to larger amounts for free because they were just cool. And, like, mm-hmm. we we did it together. So, like, then I had developed an actual, like, enjoyment of the feeling of being high because I actually, like, experienced it more, a lot more hardcore than I did those first couple of times. Um, and now I, like, actually spend money on it and do it regularly. Hmm. I, w- I was a weed freeloader for a while. I just, <laughs> I, I, I smoked where the weed took me. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. That's the first few are always free. That's right. The first few were free. I, I had a good first few that were free, um, but then, then the free ride was over, and that that friend group kind of dissipated. And, and then, then it became. The then it became. I, I have a friend, but like, we we got to split the labor. <laughs> when I had like That's... a thousand friends, like there was a couple of like friends on the top who paid for it. You know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Fair enough. I'm not carrying this episode, boys. You gotta. <laughs> well, random. What are you? What are your? I was going to the bathroom. Experience? God damn! <laughs> I was just what about to say I've been a weed fro- freeloader for years now. I just Let's go wherever go. it is. If someone goes, "Hey, do you smoke?" I'm like, "Yeah." They're like, "You want to hit this?" I'm like, "Sure." And then I just smoke, and then I leave. Once we're done hanging out, and then I just I I don't pay. Yeah, I thought you just left right after you smoked. You're, you're just like, thanks, guys. See you later. <laughs> Not even say thanks. Just leave. Walk away. <laughs> just no longer be there <laughs> yeah. at a certain moment. They turn around to pass it, and you're just like gone. I had I like a. Wa- I, what is that? Like, I just walk around to try and. 
I use my nose to try and sniff it out. I smell it. I'm like, yo, let me get a hit. And they're like, ah, oh, sick, man. Hand it to me. Take a hit. They they take it back. And I vanish, <laughs> looking for the next hit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're, just, you're, like, you're a wandering like hippie, just like looking to take <laughs> one hit off of like any weed you can find as you go on a journey across the world. You'll be a talk of the city. They'll be like, "Have hey, you see that guy too?" You'll yeah, be like an so urban weird. legend. You'll you'll be a cryptid. The fucking <laughs> smoking cryptid. There's gonna be an r slash uh, Kolochu. Like, yo, bro, I heard about this guy and I actually met him the other day. So crazy, I didn't know he's real. <laughs> a legend wandering the streets. <laughs> YouTube documentaries and everything. The the Baba Duke, but for weed. <laughs> <laughs> you realize if something if something like that actually happened, people would be so much more secure about like who they smoke with, though, in fear of the the phantom smoker coming and stealing their weed. <laughs> well, no, you don't take the weed. You're a peaceful cryptid. You just like. And the, every, everywhere you go, you find like somebody passing a joint. You just take a hit and you give it back to them, and then you wander yeah. on. It's social engineering. <laughs> a traveling figure. How did you, I call it? You? How did you um, figure out how to drive a big truck? Is that a big learning curve? Uh, it was an adjustment, but it's not too hard. Um, just take turns. I I hmm. I don't drive like the big big trucks. I just drive like the uh, service van size. Was that like, like uh, does, does it have an open door on one side or something or not? Yeah, it's got a sliding door on one side. Okay, yeah, that's the one I pictured. I slid you into it? your mother's vagina. You know what I'm saying, dog? Yeah, exactly. Riley, shut did, the fuck. <laughs> did, did you did you have like a, like a ride along or something, or do you need a special? I had two. Or... I rode along on your mom. <laughs> along with who? Have you uh, seen her, right, Riley? Have you seen her? Your mom? Yeah. Yes. How's she what? doing? I haven't seen her in a minute. <laughs> She's she's really good. She's been been spent a lot of time with me. She apologizes for not being around. That's good. Um, tell her I'd like to meet her, because I haven't met her yet. Oh, well. <laughs> she says I'd... she wants to arrange a meeting real soon. Just just be patient. It's an adoption joke for those of you who did not know. Yep, yep. You'll, you'll, meet, your real, you'll meet your real mom someday, Colo. <laughs> I have to be careful, because some people are like, you can't say that! And I'm like, I was literally adopted. I'm like... And then the other ones are like, oh, I wish I knew my mom. And they're like, you don't know your mom? I'm like, I'm adopted. And they're like, oh, oh, shit. Like, I pressed that wrong button, and I'm like, ooh, ooh, okay. Reel you back do. in. Too dark, uh, too dark. Every family sitcom <laughs> has taught us that, you're real, that your parents are the people who took care of you. So when you're adopted, those are your real parents. And you shouldn't... It, it's okay to meet it's your true. biological parents and be attached to them. But at the end of the day, those adopted parents, those are the ones who raised you. Those are the ones who put clothes on your fucking back. You gotta respect exactly. them as I your parents. I clothed myself, exactly. actually. They didn't put the clothes on me. Yeah, they weren't like Riley. They were appropriate children. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up! I like we're just adding to the canon, the detour ahead canon. Whoa! The detour ahead canon? <laughs> that sounds so sick. Yes. The detour ahead universe. <laughs> it's it's forming. How we're gonna do like an Avenger, like Riley, are we going to do, like, an Avengers-level threat where we bring all our guests back on? Like, every single one of them hop the in a single Avengers. detour, a single recording, and we bring one person who's like, this, we're going to literally set, oh, man, my brain's going too fast. Yeah, we got a, what, what guests have we had so far? We got to get them all on one big episode. We got... We got Random, we got Ida, we got uh, Demi and Jason, and we got Robin. And that Gingy. would be a strong... And Gingy. That would be a strong cast of eight, I think. What's the threat? The threat is the fact that this podcast only gets, like, three views an episode. <laughs> That's the threat <laughs> that the Avengers have to face. 
and all three of them are just people criticizing a Colo's use of mom jokes and adoption yep, jokes. Yep, they're all just like there to cancel Colo. That's their only reason. <laughs> you want to cancel me? Go to my YouTube channel. <laughs> Go to my YouTube channel. I probably said more scandalous things on YouTube or early pixels, polygons, and fun days. You're, I'm you're sure there's multiple things on the internet that you can cancel me for. Your marketing tricks don't work here, Colo. Nice try. I mean, you joined the Discord channel, so marketing does work. Oh my god! There's a lot of don't things where, like, pixels marketing does cool. work. I look in terms of just YouTube alone. I got within the first year and a half, I jumped up to 50 subs just from like word of mouth. Like, z like I want to say maybe five random people joined me because. But other than that, like 50 people, I went out and basically told people, I have a YouTube channel, you should sub to me. And that's how I got to 50 within a year and a half. Wait, I mean, like alleged allegedly. Huh? People you know in real life, you just went up to them and like, hey. Yeah, that's that's how I got so hot. That's how I got to 50 so quickly within <laughs> like a year. Nice. And then recently I, uplo I uploaded a, a video that took off. It's uh, sitting at I think it's leveled out at uh, 830 views. Uh, Pokemon I could take in a fight. And that nice. got me like 15 subscribers like in four days, which was surreal. But that had a boy. And was that uh, uploaded recently? Uh, three weeks ago. So he's probably still got some gains to go. And it got 800 views? 800, it's sitting at 830 right now. That's not bad at all. I mean, I, I average like... My average is starting to go up, by the way, Riley. Ever Thanks. since that, I haven't... The lowest one, uh, Peeled Pokemon Gen 2 got almost got 39 views, and Ohio Fast Food Tier List got 28. Nice. Uh, the best average views I have right now on a project is for the Issue Crew YouTube channel, uh, because I've made it a habit to just... Uh, Find every Discord server that I'm in with a self promo chat, which is a lot because I have like a hundred Discord servers, so at least like twenty of them. <laughs> that I might be exaggerating a little bit, maybe like fifteen of them are like populated Discords with self promo channels where you can just like post your links. So mm -hmm. I just like every every time Issue Crew goes up, I post like a link to the YouTube upload of the latest Issue Crew, like everywhere. Meanwhile, the podcast feed is there because just like. If we ever gain an actual audience, people do prefer listening to podcasts on podcast platforms. So, like we have that groundwork set, but right yeah. now the bulk the bulk of our views, which are just like uh, pumping up our our like existence and presence in like any way po any small way possible, most of those are sourced from me just like advertising the YouTube link everywhere I possibly fucking can. True that. I'm just going through your channel now. I'm looking for all the. I'm um, turning on the the bell as well. Random, your your ultimate rival is part of the issue crew. Who's that? Artsy Protsy, your worst enemy. Oh, that's not my enemy. That's my son. Or my. <laughs> that's redheaded. your son. <laughs> that's my redheaded uh, stepchild. <laughs> His heartsy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's the child you ignore. He's the child you've <laughs> given up on. Well, you know, he he, uh, I think has made some very subtle and modest gains. So I'm I'm happy with. He's not, he's on a glow up. He's on a heartsy. He, I wouldn't he, use those words. <laughs> That's a bit more dramatic. glow up. He he is savable, I think, possibly. And he'll be saved by the issue crew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What happened to the the greatest issue of the? Universe is this the new version of that. The the largest issue in the galaxy. Yes, it is the yeah. the same five people from largest issue plus two new members. Uh, we we ditched the biggest problem premise. Finally, like we 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 had a really good run and we had a lot of good times, but it was kind of a premise that was not built to last. I I came up with it as a one off premise and it evolved into an entire podcast that went on for three years. Um, nice. But we've. We finally reached a point where we were like, it's time to end it. And we almost even ended it prematurely. Um, we were going to end at 100. We would do a nice, even 100 episodes. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Biggest Problem in the Universe, the podcast that we were like ripping off, uh, had 107 episodes. 
Um, and mm. Dick Masterson, one of the co-hosts of Biggest Problem, who was the one that didn't want it to end and was like, <laughs> there was like a big drama. There was a lawsuit. It was all fucking crazy. But this is this is basically I think the good I heard guy. About, I think Keemstar covered that, right? He might have. Uh, Dick Masterson was basically the good guy in all of this. And he, as a bit now, uh, he's like, I'll go on any podcast episode 108. Because I never got my own 108, so I'm on a quest to go on every 108 in existence. So Dick Masterson will accept like any podcast guest invite, but only if it's episode 108. So we, we we made the decision to be like, all right, we're we're delaying the end of the podcast. We can do episode 108 with Dick Masterson, and then we'll do 109 as like the little heartfelt goodbye, and to like tally up the issue votes for the final <laughs> issue session that we did with Dick. And that that was the show. A solid 109 episode one run. That sounds like a solid run for sure. I, I and now, I, I'm now offended that issue. I wasn't invited. I wasn't invited to be in the issue crew. That's very alarming. The random, I want to invite you to be in the <laughs> issue crew, but Hartsey doesn't like you. That's like the one thing. There's even in, in fact the issue crew, we're setting up the issue crew website, which is gonna be like a fun little Neo Cities page. Mm-hmm. And we have post bios, but we also have guest bios. And we literally oh. put in your guest bio, perhaps he'd be a member of the issue crew, if not for his <laughs> ongoing feud with Heartsea. <laughs> I, I still like the... go on. Oh. I was just gonna say, I still love the uh bio that we came up for me. <laughs> yeah, you made it your YouTube bio. You should read it on the podcast. Yeah, I'll read yeah, it. Read it. Uh, so the bio we came the bio we came up for Kolochu on the what the issue crew website. Yes, right? the issue crew website. Yeah, just getting you some free marketing on this for the three viewers that it's listen to not us. out yet. But if, you, if you're listening to this in the future, maybe you can find the issue crew website somewhere. All right, so the so my bio on YouTube, which is also the bio that we came up with for the issue crew website, that is not out yet, uh, is. Kolochu is a stupid college dropout who de- debuted their internet career in 2018 while guest hosting hosting on Pixels, Polygons, and Fun. They now have a horribly inconsistent YouTube channel as well as constantly emitting, emitting immense amounts of basic white girl energy everywhere they go. They are, they are known to ra- randomly disappear for months on end and break Riley's heart by ending his favorite podcast. They now host Detour Ahead with Riley. That's pretty solid. Yeah, Colo Col- ended my favorite podcast. It. What a monster. I ended it brutally. I looked it brutally dead in the and eyes. without a true finale. Some, someday I I'll let you do that. Destroyed it without a care in the world. It'll be like 2025 and we'll do the finale. Like ah, you think later. I'm gonna make it to 2025? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> But uh, Look, 2028 is not going to be a fun time. That's a 30 for Kolochu, and I'm not looking forward to that. Why'd you end the, uh, the podcast? Yeah, that's going to be a 30. It was a podcast that we started like pretty shortly after Kolochu and I met. Uh, the, the story of like our origin, real quick, the abridged version mm-hmm. uh, for Random, is uh, me and our mutual friend Jinji had a video game podcast called Pixels, Polygons, and Fun, and a spinoff mm. podcast to that podcast that was specifically <laughs> oh about Pokemon, God. called Pokemon Variety Hour. And Kolochu discovered us through Pokemon Variety Hour, and also discovered Pixels. And then he asked to guest star. And... No, you asked me to come oh, on. Oh shit! I did! Because... I did! I did! I did because yeah. we, you had been talking to us, and like I, I think it was like a, a floated possibility that you would come on the show. And then I had to do it without Jinji, and I couldn't find anybody else. So, so you I asked, asked me. you. Yes, I remember that. And we did a show together, and I was so like impressed by your performance and the synergy that I, without consulting Jinji at all, live on the show, offered to make you our third co-host. Oh, because shit. the thing is, I look back, and that was all cut out, and I'm like, bruh, that's like a pivotal moment for my career. It was it was it was truly beautiful. Because the thing was like. It had been a uh, me and Jinji had been like talking shop, and we were like, okay, this show it, it's good groundwork, but we are not strong enough as a duo. We need a third guy. That we, we were on the quest to find our third guy, and I, I was talking to Kolochu, and something just clicked in my brain, and like I knew that Jinji would know it too, and I was like, this is the third guy, 
And then Jinji shows up in the call when we're done with the podcast. And originally he's like skeptical and he's kind of upset that I made like I like even floated this decision <laughs> without talking to him. And then and then leave and they voice chat for hours. And then Jinji loves him too, and he's our third guy. I think the yeah, thing that like got Jinji to like me was I asked him, I'm like, do you play Dokkan? And he's like, Yes, I remember that conversation. It was either we were talking about Dragon Ball or we were talking specifically about Dokkan. Which is what have, like sealed the deal. So, I have no idea what that is. Uh, it's uh, a mobile game, Dragon Ball Z uh, Dokkan Battle. I have put way too much of my life into it, and I'm sucked in. He's he's trapped. He can't escape. I can't. I gotta get those daily rewards. <laughs> Speaking of, but yeah, when I when I first met Kolochu, obviously, like I was immediately impressed. Um, with like his his conversational prowess, like every time I was in a podcast with him, it felt like the best content content I could be making. So immediately, even outside of Pixels, before before Cola was even officially a Pixels co-host, I'm pretty sure I remember. I, I clearly remember like an interaction in Peg and Colo episode one where I talked about you being a Pixels host, and I was like, "Oh, I did. They aren't supposed to know that yet," or like something to that effect. So it was like <laughs> right around the same time that we started so... Peg and Colo or board. This podcast was exclusively on his YouTube channel, and it was, like, the exact premise of this podcast, but Mm -hmm. a lot less structured, and we didn't bring, we didn't really, we just basically hopped in a call. We had a couple guests, but usually it was just me and Colo. Yeah, and it was called Peg and Colo are bored. And it, that's what it was. We were bored, and then we had nothing better to do, so we just put out a few episodes. Until, going back to my uh, my bio on YouTube, I, I'm known to randomly disappear. Um, I randomly disappear for, like, a month or two. Peg and Colo gets put on hold. I come back and tell Riley, yeah, I'm done with Peg and Colo, and it has never been a thing since. I looked uh, Peggy Colo dead in the eyes while it was in the backyard and just said, go, get out. Well, and I, I brought walked it, back I, in the house and locked the door. I brought it back <laughs> twice. You did bring it back. You brought it back a couple times with uh, Peg and Not Colo or board. I, I did a couple Peg and Not Colo or boards. Actually, I might have done just one. I don't remember. No, I no, no, I, either one I, or two. I did two, but oh, one of them was like, we were doing the show every week, like we were still doing Peg and Colo, and you told me you were going to miss a week or like two, like we were going to go on a little hiatus. So like I did one more episode so I could announce the hiatus because like I, I I was always very consistent about like if I'm going to announce a hiatus, I want it to be like within content. I don't want it to just be like a little announcement of fuck you, you're not getting content. I want to like do like one more episode before the hiatus. So mm-hmm. I did Peg and Not Colo are bored expecting that it would not be the final episode of the podcast <laughs> it was for a very long time yeah yeah a very very long time um and then i brought it back twice once i just did like a peg and not color board with my friend andrew because we were like we just want to do like a, a vibe a podcast and it's not going to fit any format of any show we already do um but it did fit peg and color board because peg and color board pretty much had no format so we did we did peg and not colo or board and then one time i don't know if you recall this colo we <laughs> i was in a vc with you and i just like secretly recorded it and then i revealed what i was doing with in, in, in like an evil villain speech and then i, I remember released that, that yeah i released that as a peg and colo or board episode and that was the other time it came back <laughs> yeah peg and colo or board really had a rough rough lifetime it's like the uh I don't know what analogy I was going for. Uh, it was rough, I will admit. Um, I'm not going to promise anything, because I've already promised a finale, and it's been like two years since I promised that. I will hold you to that finale eventually. Eventually there will be a point where it's like, the finale is happening. We're scheduling it right now. <laughs> that that will occur. He did not promise a timeline, which is why it's been about two years. <laughs> Oh, I didn't pro all I said was, yeah, we should definitely do that. And then it never got brought up again. <laughs> what I tried to do is one of the one of the bits we did on the reason this finale was like inactive planning. It was just a scheduling issue. Because what I wanted to do was one of our most famous bits on Peg and Color Board was we did a waifu war. We had a debate about whose anime waifu was better. 
That's right. I remember and that, was, that. That was inspired by a podcast that I like that Colo knows nothing about called Waifu Wars, which is hosted by uh, comedian Asterios Kokonos. Didn't you? Who? Who? Uh, who? What was the? What, fuck. Words. Yeah. Who's the judge? Who's the judge for that? Uh, I don't know if we had a judge. No, for the I other part. Third person come in as like maybe a it was maybe it was Jinji or Penguin. It was not Penguin. I would remember if it was Penguin. I think it was Jinji. Maybe I don't remember. It, it probably was Jinji. But uh, we did this waifu war, and it was inspired by Asterios. And I had like done a couple. Asterios had done a couple of guest appearances on my podcast, and we were kind of like generally acquainted. And he was oh, wow. somewhat willing to appear on podcasts of mine. Uh, so I hit up Asterios, and I was like, "Hey." I have this like podcast that nobody watches, but it means a lot to me. And we did a waifu war, and we're doing a big finale, and we want to have a waifu war and have you judge it. And Asterios was down, but then I could not make a schedule happen that would line up with, with all three of us at the same time. It was just like impossible with Colo's schedule at the time and Asterios' schedule at the time. So that's why it mm. fell through and it never happened. So... That's how uh, the birth of this podcast actually started. I wanted to do a new podcast, but I didn't want to bring back Peg and Cole or aboard. So I went and created a whole new fucking podcast. Just despite me, we're literally doing the same podcast pretty much. <laughs> it's yeah, but it's literally the same me, thing. It's a different show. It's literally the exact same thing, except slightly more structured. Like, there's a, like we bring guests on, and the guests decide what we talk about. And then we just go and have a conversation. If we talk about that, cool. If we don't, we do not try and stay on topic mo a majority of the time. Which is Damn. why the only times... I'm pretty sure the topic for today was supposed to be Twitter, right? Yes, we're 50 minutes in and we have not at all had a single conversation about Twitter. <laughs> the only thing about Twitter is I mentioned that in reference to my ADHD and found cats with jobs. That um, is true. And to be the fair, other I, also, thing, uh, I forgot that Riley uh, actually in his invitation that he extended said the guest dictates the agenda. So I just posted like a bunch of topics like five minutes before we started. So yeah, and they were like all like current events topics, which it was like, uh, we this is a show where we pick one discussion topic and we talk about it. And a lot of those current events would not last an hour to an hour and a half of content. Yeah, maybe all be, of like them. really stretched maybe, it out. Maybe all of them, and also maybe if I knew Riley that that was a format of the show before joining, uh, I, I'm, I'm then bad at explaining. <laughs> I'm bad at explaining things random. Okay, it, it turned out well. We have 50 minutes of great content. This is like one of the best podcasts I've recorded in a while. <laughs> yeah, we. I don't. We haven't had a bad episode. <laughs> no, I, I. I mean, I guess I was Which kind of interesting. I was absent were... for like a third of the Dragon Ball podcast due to like network issues. So I don't know. Yeah, that was, even that, that, that Shinji and I were able to hold, like. There has not been a podcast where that's why I wanted to bring guests on because we can three people you can bounce ideas off of multiple people and you can have really good conversations with three people. Not saying you and I can't have good conversations because we had we've had what two episodes where we did it a yes, duo cast uh, episode one was a duo cast because we hadn't had the idea of like bringing on a guest every episode yet um yeah. uh, for reference people if you don't know episode one and episode two came out like six months apart so uh, a fucking era of time passed between the first and second episode of this podcast I think but, there uh, was a decent amount of time in between two and three, wasn't there? Yes, there was. A, there was like a. There was like a month between two and three, but between one and two, there was like six months. And then so it was like I, a. Yeah. And then from there, we've been pretty much weekly. We've missed a couple, but we've been mostly weekly. Which is not bad. Like my YouTube channel tells says I'm horribly inconsistent with things. I've been pretty consistent with this YouTube, with the YouTube channel, and with doing this podcast. Like, you did like you you became like actively into content again and I'm like I'm happy that you're doing it and it's going to I know 
Uh, th maybe you'll surprise me, Kolo, but your history leads me to believe that there will be a point where you disappear again, and it will fucking devastate my soul. Because this is a <laughs> this is a great era of content right now. I still enjoy working with you just as much as I did from the very beginning. You are still like one of the people. It's like if I could. Uh, if, if I had to host my best podcast, like if somebody was like, if God walked up to me and said, you have to make the best podcast you've ever made, make it happen. Colo would be like the top of my list of being like, okay, this is one of the guys I'm getting. Yeah, but God would be like, you have to get me this podcast by this day. You'd text me this and I'd be like, ooh, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the unfortunate thing. My <laughs> schedule is, I, I am horribly, I am chronically lazy, which is the reasoning for a lot of my disappearances and scheduling conflicts, but I, I, we, we've like made a Saturday kind of like the day now. Oh yeah, no, like I've you... blocked out m my Saturdays for YouTube, which for like just on, just online shit, just YouTube yeah, for like recording for your YouTube and for this Amazon. podcast, which is perfect. Um, speaking of which. I am almost out of YouTube videos, buddy. Oh, we, we got some stuff to do. We got some... I have uh, one more week left. Okay, well, I mean, we can do something. We can figure something out. Well, yeah, we'll have to do it next Saturday. But, um, because it's late. Stuff to do after this podcast. But, yeah. um... Random, I gotta get you on more stuff, too. We, we gotta get you... We gotta get you the Issue Crew guest pot. You, you're overdue for it. We need we need to to ambush Heartsy unexpectedly. Perhaps uh, Har Heartsy's only on like so, so far he's conformed to the minimum once a month. But I'm 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 skeptical on his ability to even hold, uphold that standard. Give him a chance. He's on the way I, up. I am giving him a chance. The Demi Gloom is the one who's like planting doubt doubt in my head. Demi Gloom is like the skeptical one who has like no faith, <laughs> and I'm like. Uh, I know, oh, but don't they have? Don't they have? Har Hartsy will never hear this. Hartsy doesn't give a single shit about Detour Ahead. Um, but even if even if he does, Hartsy is like super cool, and I want to continue working with him. And I hope he doesn't think less of me for saying any of this. But like, that's that's the question: is like, is Hartsy going to continue to appear regularly on the podcast? <laughs> you can always threaten uh, inviting me as a co-host <laughs> as a punishment. I feel like if I feel like Heartsy would be like the the like memester, and I don't I, I don't know how invested he is in the project. So as far as I know, if I say that once, he'll just be like, "Okay, bye," and then leave the group chat, and then that's an that's and, a then, and then it will become a reality, and Random will be the co-host instead. But... And then the views the views will explode. Everyone will talk about what a great quality jump the show's made. But no, I, I definitely want to have you on as a guest very soon, Random. And I, I wanted to invite you on this show because, first of all, this is a show where I have to find a different guest every week. So I'm kind of forced to go outside of my usual um, gaggle once I kind of run, run thin on the pickings. And then it's like, oh, yeah, I haven't done something with Random in a while. I like that guy. Let me invite him on this show. <laughs> I, do have to bring, I do have to bring some of my friends on this podcast at some point in time. But yeah, I'm, ex I'm excited to meet some of your friends, but your your friends, I think, are not as like terminally internet pilled as mine, so they're not as easy to like rope into a podcast. No, they're not. It's like a hassle to be like, "Hey, you want to come on a podcast?" And they're like, "Ah, no." And I'm like, "Come on." <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 desire to like bring people from your real life onto podcasts is real. I've had a bunch of planning like go into like planning phases for starting podcasts with real life friends that i feel like would be really fucking good and then most of them like sink in the water before they even like happen uh there was one exception where it actually did happen for a little while but it only we only produced like probably less than 10 episodes like the higher single digits um which was the rad movie review podcast which i did with my real life co-workers alexis and dakota and it was it was really sick and good while it was going on, even though D Dakota was not pulling his weight. It was <laughs> it was the Riley and Alexis movie show featuring Dakota. Like I'll 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 just say that out out front. But like that podcast with Alexis, like talking about movies, was like actual really fucking cool material. Um, and then it kind of mm -hmm. fell apart, and Alexis and Dakota became really busy because they're real people with real lives and are not terminally internet pilled. So that fell through my fingers too, and. You've had um, a lot of things fall through your fingers. Yeah, you <laughs> know. Cool. 
Yeah, Peg and Colo, fuck you. <laughs> I gotta keep you. I gotta keep you on your toes. I'm not bringing it back. Wait, except for the it's, finale that you promised. <laughs> it's now a meme, just like I'm the greatest host of PVH that has ever been. I hate that meme. That meme has given me a fucking phobia. Colo, <laughs> you, you what, have ruined my I life. Hop, anytime I hop on. You're just like, please, no. No, 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 it's not even that. It's not even like the Pokemon Variety Hour thing. It goes deeper. It goes into every single podcast I run, Colo. I now have a phobia where I, like, cannot let somebody else host my podcast for even one episode because I'm so scared if something like Colo Best Host will happen again, and I cannot let it happen. That's why I have to be on, like, every episode of The Issue Crew, even though, like, I promise that, like, if even one person shows up, even if it's not me, the issue crew has to happen every week. But and, and even if, you even if I can't show goal. up, but I fucking I make it happen. I make it work because I'm so scared that if I let an episode of the issue crew happen without me, whoever takes charge will become a best host meme, and I can't do it again. <laughs> I can't do it. I have. Oh my god! I'm giving you an irrational <laughs> yes, fear. Yes, yes. That's terrifying. Riley, speaking of Twitter, um, I found Kolochu. Not Kolochu54, I found at Kolochu. Did you, did you contact these the, this folk at, at Kolochu? At the Kolochu no, Twitter because channel? because they, they do not speak English, so I have to give it up. They also have not tweeted since 2011, so like, so they were the, the only other thing that they have going for them is they've been on Twitter with at Kolochu since October of 2010. I joined Twitter November of 2011. So you, you should uh, you should try some. Are there DMs open? You should just try Google Translate. It's like, what do you got to lose? Even oh no, up? I I have fully followed this person with the intent to try and have a conversation about giving me the rights to at Kolochu instead of at Kolochu 54. But at the same time, I've put at Kolochu 54 out on the internet so much, especially with like PVH and pixels to the point where I'm just like, I'll probably just keep 54 at this point. If I can lock down Kolochu, it's the Twitter is the last platform I need to lock down uh, the Kolochu brand. Yeah, keep it, keep it consistent, dog. Yeah, that's right. Gotta keep it consistent. I've locked it down pretty much everywhere I can. Or everywhere that I've thought about. I haven't locked it down on uh, TikTok, too. Are you guys on that? No. I, I, I'm like, I don't want to touch TikTok. Like, occasionally, like, I'll see shit from TikTok that actually seems, like, interesting and good. But, like, most of what I see from TikTok is fucking garbage, and it's a uh, it's just a generally a, a type in, of content and, like, media consumption that I just don't vibe with. I like long-term content. I, I, I'm not, like, big on, like, algorithm-pleasing fucking tiny little consumable videos. Like, I'm, I'm a fucking Let's Play guy. I sit on YouTube and I'll watch fucking Let's Plays for hours. Like, I'm that guy. The, the guy that existed in, like, 2016. Like, I go back and I watch, like, fucking Game Grumps. I watch, like, Monkey and Trixie's old Let's Plays and, like, old, like, PCP Let's Plays in general. Like, the, just, like, the old fucking, like, Let's Play type content where it's just, like, a, a, a group of personalities who are, like, entertaining and funny, like, on a couch, just, like, talking to each other and making jokes. Like, like the Monkey and Asperger Let's Plays, I go back to those, like, at least once every a couple of months. Like, that's, th- those are some of my favorites. Did you, ever, did you ever get into Markiplier at all? No, because I'm very much, like, a, a group Let's Play guy. Like, I, I don't do solo Let's Plays, really. He's done uh, group stuff with uh, his two friends, Bob and Wade. They're pretty yeah. good. Yeah, they're pretty good. And I also, I watched a lot of Unis Honest while that was going on. So, I guess I was a fan of Markiplier in that way. I was an Unis Honest fan for when that was going on. What was the deal uh, with that? Like, what was the appeal to that? Uh, well, the, he, okay, so with uh, Unis Honest, right? Uh-huh. So Unis Honest was a channel that uh, that Mark created, and the whole premise of it was... It was a duo. They're going to upload a video every single day for an entire year, and then at the very end of the that full year of videos, the channel got deleted. 
yeah that that Who was like the it? bit is that's like oh it's it's this is temporary we're gonna do one big cool year and then it's gonna be gone and then they like they hyped it up it became like big trending on the internet and then like the the end stream like the final day they did like a full big stream and at the end of the stream they deleted the channel and then it was over and all we had was the memories but their sequel <laughs> when are we, yeah when are they gonna make tunis on us <laughs> I, think they, I think they actually had talked about it. I think it's still yeah. too early for them to do another Unis on us. I think it's got to give it a few more years. Fans. I think they're the... going to give it a few more years before they do something like that. Uh, the other biggest c- contribution to it was the uh, COVID lockdown with like basically everything shutting down and stuff back in 2020. It provided the perfect experience, the perfect scenario for them to just grind out as many videos as possible every single day and just do this do this idea that nobody else has done yeah Yeah, man content on the the internet uh the partner was the the other person crank was uh yeah ethan crank gameplays Riley, what are you gonna put for the uh, title of this episode? <laughs> I think I'm gonna go with like the old Peg and Colo format, where I just did like three topics with like commas. I'm gonna name nah, it like. Ah, no, 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 no. J- what you gotta do is what you're gonna do is it's gonna be Detour Ahead, episode number eight, nine, eight. eight? I think maybe, yeah. No, no, nine, nine. Something like that. The number is irrelevant. Continue your thought. Oh, oh you're just going to put, I don't know. Well, no, that's silly, because I do know. <laughs> I know what we talked about. I'm just going to do, like, jobs, comma, peg and colo, comma, internet content will probably be what the title is. It's a work in progress. Yeah, so something to that effect. Something in that general format. Hey, Riley, we are the second... I just googled Detour Ahead podcast. We are the second uh second result. What is the first result? What is this? What is this? It's just like the Riley podcast mega feed <laughs> because that the show was also in that for its first couple episodes. It looks like a Christian <laughs> podcast called Detour oh, Ahead. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> it you is called that? Detour Ahead and it's on Audible. That's pretty Actually, I had a similar situation where it's like, I kind of like, I Google a name once, and it's like, if I don't find anything immediately, I'm kind of like, yeah, that's usable. Um, so I guess now we have the detour ahead thing. Uh, with, the, with the MoCast, even though I didn't name the show because I wasn't always a co-host, I became a co-host like a little bit later. Um, but the MoCast shares its name with like two other podcasts, one of which is a spanish anime show called the moe cast and the other one of which is a sports show also just called the mo cast uh so it, it, it's been a big meme i i gotta i don't like know them they're complete strangers and i would never listen to their podcast because i don't give a single fuck about sports so it's like kind of weird to just like approach people you don't know but i feel like it would be great memes if i invite the guys from the mo cast the sports show on the MoCast, and we just like talk about sports because I know I know Mo is at least somewhat into sports, so we could we could definitely do like a sports topic podcast with those guys, and it would be good memes because it would be the MoCast meets the MoCast. <laughs> do you guys like and, sports? Um, I know I know that Mo does. I do not. <laughs> hmm. Uh, I follow the local football team here, but that's about hmm. it. Only local, like the. The one for the state, for the city, the mm. NFL football team. Oh, the NFL, okay. NFL, yeah. Then, They're not but... good. They're not good. I don't follow them much. I just, I try and keep track of what they're, how, how they're doing. I'll sometimes listen or watch the games, but the Browns are kind of awful. Mm. Oh, they man. did win their last game, though, which was very surprising. Um, they're facing the Bengals, which... I thought they were going to lose, but... But uh, the other show where I had the uh, duplicate name issue was uh, me and my friend Andrew's Let's Play show, Big Guy, Little Guy, um, which Mm. the origin of that name was literally from, like, a shitpost on the Monkey and Big Show channel, 
um, where Monkey and Biggs just read, le- read like the TV tropes page for the big guy, little guy trope. And I thought it was really silly and that it was a funny trope. So me and my friend Andrew, who is a much like skinnier and small, smaller uh, 16-year-old who I've, I had been doing a podcast with for a while at that point, we started a Let's Play channel that we also put the podcast on. Um, and we called it Big Guy, Little Guy. Um, and we, we've, been, we've been doing that channel for like years now. We recently, we're, we're really bad about it. We'll have, it's literally like your channel, Colo, where like for like a few weeks or a few months, we'll upload consistently and then we'll like disappear for a while. I've been good on my <laughs> YouTube channel. Do not degrade me on my YouTube channel. No, no, no. Right Recent, recently you've been very good, but I'm saying. I have just... made a lot of changes to that YouTube channel. I actually, I have a legitimate banner now. I have a good, I have a, uh, a good bio. I have a single video that did really, really well. So my YouTube channel is in terms of after the shakiness past flourishing. After the shakiness, you've reached very high heights, Colo, and I'm very proud of you. But Big Guy, Mm. Little Guy is still going through what you had gone through in the past, where it's like, we'll have a really good, strong streak, and then it will kind of, we'll just fall out of favor. Recently, it's kind of sad, because we were on, like, what's probably been our longest streak. It was like a month or two um, of doing the uploads we were supposed to, which was the schedule we set was three times a week. Uh, Every Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday, there would be a Big Guy, Little Guy upload. And we did that for like a month or two. And that was the first time we had done it for that long in a row. And it was like really exciting and cool. And it felt like we were on a good streak. And then we fucked it up. And now there hasn't been an upload in like a week and a half. And we haven't yet like started scheduling like more recording sessions. So it's like, oh no, big guy, little guy's fucked again. And then there's, um, first of all, to finish the big guy, little guy story, there were like some fat people in their 20s that did a show called Big Guy, Little Guy podcast on youtube and we found them and i believe we predated them but i like i just like started memeing in their comments like trying to like set up a collab and it just never came to fruition and now they don't upload anymore so that kind of fizzled out but then and now now you're you're the the fat guy in your 20s yep that's right (laughs) i was the fat guy in my 18 when the channel started i think 18 or 19 uh and now i'm a fat guy in my 20s that's right um but let's plays have been a big thing in my career lately and like the the consistency that i had for a while is kind of starting to fall apart at the seams and i'm kind of i'm kind of like overwhelmed about it and i really want to try to get back on the horse um but i'm adding more obligations when i'm not even meeting my current ones because i have this weird addiction to just like making as much content as possible where my let's play schedule as it stand as it stood before was i did big guy little guy which is three 20 minute let's plays a week that I had to record in an- with Andrew. Um, and then I started a channel called Riley's unedited let's play hellscape. Um, and the premise of that channel is it's daily let's plays and the let's plays are about 10 minutes long. Some of them are a little longer. Um, and I've, I uploaded on that channel every day and I did that for five months. And recently that streak was broken and it's like heartbreaking and it's like, it, it's, it's difficult to get back on the horse. Um, but, and I just like feel really bad for like the original streak being broken after so long. And now on top of that, um, I've started another Let's Play show because I'm a fucking madman uh, with uh, my friend Demi Gloom. We do it on her second channel, which has a lot more subscribers than her first channel because it's mostly Breaking Bad uh, DS OST, which is our, our Breaking Bad DS is our little YouTube views scheme where we make content based around this fictional non-existing Breaking Bad Nintendo DS meme, and it always gets thousands of views without fail. <laughs> so, uh, Riley, Demi's... Oh, sorry, continue. Yeah, so Demi's second channel has a thousand subscribers now. And like it is, it is past 1k, well past 1k, I think, actually. Um, yeah. and it's mostly breaking bad memes, but also she posts other content there. And now we do a let's play show on there that comes out, um, on the weekends Friday, Saturday, and Sunday three uploads all in a row on the weekends, uh, called The Gamer Gate, which, yeah, funny meme title that we came up with is it's called The Gamer Gate. <laughs> it's two words, they're not, they're not together like they are in the other Gamer Gate, it's The Gamer Gate. <laughs> and we've been doing that now. Um, we just got through our second weekend of uploads. 
Um, but now all, I haven't done all my other Let's Play shit in a while, and I got to kind of approach it. And the real logical thing would be to like try to cut some of it. But what I'm going to do is try to bend over fucking backwards, snap my spine in three different places to make scheduling work and have all three of those shows run at the same time because I have an addiction to content. Riley, I have Good. a little update. Uh, the other podcast that is beating us on uh, Google search, it's yeah. not called Detour Ahead. They have a single fucking episode called Detour Ahead. Oh, no! That's Which nice. is more upsetting! <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm not. No, I'm. Not, uh, you're not getting free. Fuck you. You're not getting free advertising. I'm not gonna say the name. I'm upset. We should be number one. We are number two though. If you if you go on Google and look up Detour Ahead podcast, we are number two, which is very surprising. That is good. Now, real quick, Colo. Um, I, I want to get into this real quick. We've kind of had this deep conversation about mostly my content and also a lot of your content. I would like to take a moment and focus on uh, Random's content because I don't know, I don't interact with him as much as I do everyone else. So I'm not as intimately familiar with like his content pattern and how it works. So Random, kind of tell us about like the content you make and like what your philosophy behind it is and like your your content creation history and your current uh your your current podcast the measly few and then like your youtube channel stream stuff and anything else that you do a hundred percent thank you so much i've been champing at the bit as they say uh to talk about my podcast uh there i have a podcast that's called pursuing the pinnacle it's uh, something that's available on uh, Audible. <laughs> Shut the fuck and up. We, <laughs> we, Shut the fuck uh, up. <laughs> we, it's, uh, basically Riley, that's the fucking podcast pushing. I was talking about with Detour Ahead. <laughs> it's mostly, oh it mostly focuses on religious content. And, uh, <laughs> 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 fuck for you. Record, I wasn't going to give them free advertising. <laughs> For for the record, when I when I googled it, uh, your guys's Spotify is actually the top link. Is Hell it? yeah! Mm-hmm. I do know I've we're, locked down. We're doing I've better on down. Canadian Google than we are American Google. It's true. Uh, I do know I have locked down Colo Chu YouTube channel as the number one result when you look up Colo Chu, which is amazing. That feels nice. really good. My number two result is my Twitter. Wow, one and two, one two punch. That but, might uh, be because I'm signed in as Kolochu, but no, uh, we won't read into that. But but yeah, <laughs> random, but for real though, your content. Tell us about yeah. it. Yeah. So I uh, spearhead a supposedly collective podcast called The Measly Few that is uh, basically a bunch of people that were used to be in the Monkey Discord uh group and we just talk about random stuff. Uh but it's, it's, it's a, kind of similar to your your shows, your various shows. Uh, for just kind of bouncing ideas back and forth. I'm the most sane one, obviously. And other, uh, I also have another podcast that's called um, Bloomer vs. Doomer. That uh, usually gets somebody that's a bit more on the pessimistic side. And then we give our collective takes. I think our latest one was about the, the boy in a band, Gandal. Uh, yeah, I think I saw that. I haven't listened to it yet. I know I was on like another previous Bloomer versus Doomer. I don't remember what we talked about. We talked about the 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 Asperger controversy, but I don't remember what else we discussed. Yeah, that was that was a good one because uh, I'm a relative newcomer to that whole scene, so it was good to get some history lessons straight from the source. Oh yeah, we, <laughs> you you aren't a monkey uh, old fan. We we went deeper in the lore than you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm I'm not a new fan either. You, you just uh, exist and, and yeah. nobody can pin down the exact time in which random candor became a monkey fan which i'm not a fan at all i i half wish cola would get into monkey but half i don't want to i i don't want to try to pull somebody else into like the parasocial pit that is being a monkey fan uh, yeah. because monkey jones is just such this like prolific youtuber that has built this like community of like strange worshipers they're all like these interesting characters and then like the people who escape the monkey jones cyclone and then like create like side shit like like random candor who makes the measly few podcasts with a bunch of people who aren't really as prominent in the monkey jones community anymore and some that are as well um and it's like this weird 
uh, there was a there's a show I was involved with that kind of did a similar thing, like like the measly few as I understand like it in broad strokes. It's like a podcast about monkey fans, but it's not about monkey. It's about th- yeah. it's about the fans themselves. Um, which a, a similar thing that I was like a, a frequent guest on when it aired, and then it became like this huge meme and this crazy lore. But in its original form, there was this show called the Dickheads Podcast. And the simple and the, and the concept back in the day was that it was uh, Dick Show fans, and they would kind of like talk to each other and like interview each other about their work. And it wasn't really about Dick; it was about Dick's fans. So it was a it was a similar project. And Measly Few is like kind of like that, but for Monkey. And it's like really interesting and cool, and I like it a lot. How did the Dickheads uh, uh, pro- progress? Like, did they start kind of completely deviating from anything? Did they have to talk about? The so it's like the, the Dick Gets podcast literally has like seasons and those seasons represent like arcs. It's it's like so season one was just like this guy named JP who was like a musician and he was like a dick fan. He wanted to start this like fun show where you like interviewed other uh, dick show fans and just like had a good time. Um, and they started that show. But like eventually it was like infiltrated about by like the more trolly members of the dick show community. And mm. it kind of got like slowly taken over from the inside. And then it imploded and it ended. and jp disappeared from the dick show community and then it came mm-hmm. back for the season two which was one of the one of the more prominent like trolls um but also like a kind of a cool guy who i like genuinely um this guy named grant Leahy, who was like involved mm-hmm. starting near the end of season one and then he starts season two with this guy named cram and clark and the the idea of season two is these are people who used to be dick show fans but now they hate dick and it's like a it's a show about how much they hate dick basically is what season two is <laughs> and then <laughs> and then eventually grant disappears from the internet and cameron clark starts season three with this other ex dick fan he finds named beth who's like this cool uh transgender girl she's pretty cool we had our own largest issue once along with cameron clark and some other people in that circle um and they made the dickheads podcast season three which was also an anti dick show podcast. And they like went into deep dick show drama, but like also it was like this troll podcast where like people who were interested in the dick show drama would show up expecting like hot gossip and Cameron Clark and Beth and co would like troll them by having like an hour long conversation about Steven universe before they get into the <laughs> <laughs> It was it was pretty fucking sick, and I I was like I was a common guest on that show just because like I liked those guys, even though I was a big fan of Dick and I didn't dislike him. I would just like come on that show because like most of the conversation was not Dick Show related. That was like part of the bit was like there was good Dick Show gossip in there, but it was buried under like Steven Universe <laughs> discussion <laughs> and like other various topics. Um, and then uh, there was there was one episode of season four which was just like awful chaos because fucking pot awful got their hands on it and pot awful is like this whole other community of like insane trolls who do like this podcast and it's like it's great entertainment but it's like you don't want to be involved with it (laughs) and i i was because like i i was hosting season four i wanted to like bring it back um because they stopped doing season three and then somebody from some like a pot awful fan got involved and like I kind of got trolled a little bit. Like I did actually get kind of like heated and upset because like it was ruined. <laughs> um, so we season four ended with one episode, and then and then we just me and my friend Mo just rebooted it, and we just made it like a, a show where we talked about episodes of the Dick Show, like like a fucking wrap up show basically. And that that eventually just kind of ended because we started doing other things. So the dickheads podcast ended unremarkably because it was just me and Mo talking about the dick show at the end, but it had a rich history leading up to that reality. <laughs> it actually it circled back to be what it was purported to be, but never actually was. Yes, pretty much. What a roller coaster. It, it was an interesting arc in my life. <laughs> Did everyone just like stop caring about it or stop? Caring yeah. About like a lot movie? of those people, the, those like anti dick people, a lot of them pride themselves on like not on like escaping being terminally online. It's like mm-hmm. they'll spend some time on Discord and shit, but like eventually they kind of petered out from like spending enough time on Discord to make that podcast, and they just started yeah, doing like more real things in real life. And then their Discord time is just kind of dedicated to them shitting on Dick Masterson and also Trixie the Golden Witch, formerly Digibro, mostly really is who they shit on now. If only uh, the monkey. Universe could have 
such fans. I think they do, and it's called the Asperger and Sheepover community. It's it's a really weird microcosm of, of like um, the Sheepover Discord and like the Asperger stream community is just like full of people who are like really old names in the Monkey Jones community that you never hear anymore. Like people like DD Pizza Ron and like the, those types of people that you like you heard talked about like in 2018 in like, like old Redux? Redux plays. Is yes, Redux, Redux, Redux is around there too. Um, I don't know if he's oh around there anymore. God. I don't think he's around there anymore. He didn't he didn't like leave the monkey community and he's still in the Asperger one to my knowledge, but Redox was around and then it was like just like all these like interesting old people from the monkey community that like kind of fell out of favor with monkey. Uh a lot of them after the Sheepover breakup, they shot they sided with Sheep 100%, um which is why they joined like the Sheepover Discord and now they're kind of like her community. And then Asperger kind of like became a part of that community. And he's more prominent of like a content guy than Sheep is. So now he's kind of like the content center of that community is Asperger. You just motivated me to join the Asperger community. <laughs> they're my type of peeps. Sounds like. they're, they're, yeah, they're the, they're the real homies, <laughs> even though I, I still like Monkey. I feel bad. It's the, same, it's the same case of me being involved with the Dickheads podcast. It's like literally the same. Where, like, I frequent the Asperger community because, like, I love Asperger. I think he's a really, like, charismatic content creator. And I love everything mm -hmm. he's in. But I also really love Monkey. So, like, I kind of, I participated in the Monkey shit talk because it's, like, kind of like the conversation of the town. But in mm -hmm. reality, I, I, I also love Monkey truly. And it's, like, a conflict. He's mid. <laughs> <laughs> Kolo, who are, so who are some YouTubers that you obsess over so much that it's, like, literal insanity that you should get checked out by a mental health professional? Mark Blair. <laughs> I should have known. <laughs> Um, that's literally, I watch him religiously. That's like the only YouTuber I frequent on a weekly basis. Uh, he's the only one that I will like legitimately check and see if he's uploaded every single day. Um, the only other YouTuber that I will watch everything that they release is, uh, Cold Ones. Yeah. They're right. Well, even those like shitty fucking. We bought all the stuff online, guys. I watch everything. Yeah, I I watch like, them religiously for no no reason. They're good. To me, they kind of fell off whenever they stopped doing the interviews. The interviews are still fire though. Uh, they just interviewed Ludwig. Uh, yeah, that was a, a couple one. weeks ago. Mm -hmm. That was the whole premise of it. They just, I think because of COVID, they have been having a lot of issues trying to get people to come on this show. Like, they were going yeah. to bring, uh, did they already do bring iDubs on? No, I don't think they have. No, they, call, they called him, but I don't think they did, like, a legitimate interview in Literally the only, like, Cold Ones video I've seen is the clip from the episode where they did, that they did with Super Mega. That's, like, the yep. only that, Cold that Ones one I've seen. One. That one yeah, was a that good was one. a good one. The Belle Delphine one, not Simbang. That one was okay, too. Yeah. It was good. Of the ones yeah. I've watched, it was actually really interesting to actually, like, see an interview. But... Mm -hmm. I agree. They do need to go back to the uh, interviews, though. Their stupid content is good and it's funny, but the interviews are what like brought everybody to them. So, and I think it it makes them a lot of money. So, oh yeah, it stop. makes them <laughs> shit. Ton. If you've seen if you've seen any of their other videos, you can you can see how much shit they buy and how much money they get, mm -hmm. and how much money they spend on this shit too. It's ridiculous, but they made it. They've actually yeah, right. they've been relevant for a wild, wild amount of time too. So good for them. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I hate to cut this podcast short. Uh, it is almost time for me to be gone. Um, what do you mean by that? What I do you have, mean by that? <laughs> I have. I'm going. I'm going drinking with a few friends. Okay, that's reassuring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Colo's doing real things. He's catching. He's touching grass today. So we gotta, we gotta not talk about like fucking terminally online bullshit for three more hours. <laughs> we could this pot this podcast episode could probably go on for another thirty minutes to an hour, but it's already been about an hour and a half. 
And I don't want to make these episodes last so long to the point where like it's you have to take like multiple days to listen to it because I don't think anybody has a good two hour block to listen to things. So Colo, real quick, I do want to say Colo, you said uh, you said ten fifteen was like the absolute limit when you DMs me. Can that we do is like ten fifteen? I have to be on the road by. I still have oh, to go shit. and get changed and okay. stuff. The, well, I, I wanted to give like a, a tight ten, but maybe we can we can shorten it to a tight five on like Elon Musk buying Twitter <laughs> and like yeah, so how we, we feel about it. that. So we can include it into the title. I don't know if I will put it in the title <laughs> anyway, but I, I was just kind of interested. I don't in know what you you're going to do with pop. this. I don't know what you're going to do with this title. We talked about. This, I know this what I'm the... calling it. Yeah, yeah. This was the epitome yeah. of detour ahead, where you come on to listen to people talk about a single topic, and we don't talk about shit. Yeah, I we literally just talked to... about so much stuff today. I'm naming yeah, it even... Jobs, comma Peg and Colo, comma Internet Content. That's the yeah, title. Even, even though, like my my podcast, you could probably just name guys. it Internet Content. Honestly, I, 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 even though my podcast was before you guys, I'm giving you permission to call this episode Detour Ahead. Hold on. Your Hold podcast on. Is whatever Hold fucking critical. Riley. <laughs> What's up? Give me a minute. Hold on. Pursuing the pinnacle. Subscribe. Is it on pursuing Audible. the pinnacle? <laughs> it is. Subscribe on Riley, Audible.com. You have to name this episode Pursuing the Pinnacle. <laughs> yeah, it's only right. It's only right. It's only fair because we did talk about them on our podcast. Yes, they talked a... about okay, Detour Ahead, gonna... but yeah. This is the formless episode, so we can give it a meme title. Yes, we'll call it Pursuing the Pinnacle. It means nothing to anybody who's listening, but it's fine. There's also, it's a there's meme another, title. There's another podcast that's called uh, Detour Ahead, Reading With Your Kids podcast. I think that uh, might actually get the Riley a Reading With charge. Your Kids podcast, <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, I do see that. Yeah, there's also uh, Detour this Ahead. Is a, that's the a spin-off of show. I run that. <laughs> there's so many. Uh, no, we're naming this episode Pursuing the Pinnacle because that's the number one. I want that number one spot. <laughs> we're giving free advertising to my other podcast. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> anyway. Pursuing the um, Pinnacle featuring Random Candor. There yeah, we go. Listen to Pursuing the Pinnacle, guys. Don't ever listen to any more uh, Detour Ahead podcasts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just switch, switch. three viewers away. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, but all right, gamers, it's time to do our, our, our plugs. So first we'll, we'll give it to Random Candor. We just heard about some of his content, but now he's going to tell you where you can find said content. Yeah. Ooh. You're right. I've been uh, yeeted from Twitter on multiple accounts, so you can find me on YouTube at Random Candor with a K instead of a C. And the measly few M E A S L Y F E W on YouTube for all your uh, boredom busting needs. Thank you very much for having me, gentlemen. Hell yeah. Colo, where can they find you? You can find me on YouTube as Colo Chu. You can find me anywhere as Colo Chu, really. Except fucking Twitter. Uh, I'm Colo Chu54 on Twitter. Don't follow Colo Chu. Fuck that person. Block Colo Chu on Twitter. I'm out for blood. <laughs> I have found the person who has stolen my name. Twitter is the last domain I need. The last mainstream domain. Domain. I'm gonna. Report I'm gonna add Elon Twitter. Musk and be like, "Hey, I have a YouTube channel. Can you like change this, please?" Either that, or I'm gonna go pay the eight dollars a month to get verified. <laughs> As Colo two forty two. I'll pay the money to get verified so I can. I I mean, if you search Colo Chu, I already report, show up. You can report them for impersonating you because you joined, verified. They joined, they joined me. They joined before me, so I have no I have no defense for that. They, jo- like, if no, they joined I'm, after me. Then yeah, I'm a celebrity from I, I'm a celebrity, and I didn't make a Twitter account, but somebody made a Twitter account, pretended to be me. You report them, and you say they've been impersonating you because they made a Twitter account before you, but you're a celebrity. Anyway, you can find me on yeah, I've, Twitter as I've, Polo254. I've already, I've already told uh, Pursuing the Pinnacle to do something similar, so... <laughs> Ch- change the measly few to Pursuing the Pinnacle officially. <laughs> <laughs> Riley, I want that first spot. <laughs> I want Detour Ahead Pursuing the Pinnacle to show up when you search their YouTube... Their, you search their yeah. podcast. 
yes, yes, fuck yes. But uh, we're out for blood this episode. The main place you can find me is the Issue Crew. That's what I want you to see. It's my uh, collaborative YouTube channel and podcast uh, um, with uh, six of my closest internet friends um, and content creation partners. Um, It's really cool. And Hartsy. Wow. (laughs) No, not and Hartsy's part of that. Um, and that's a cool show. You can find it on YouTube as The Issue Crew or on podcast platforms as The Issue Crew, um, which is all curated. You can get a hyperlink to each platform if you go to anchor.fm slash issue crew. Um, the link in the description of this podcast for me, because I kind of like, once I make an aesthetic choice, I have a hard time changing it. And the aesthetic choice I made for this podcast is that we each only get one link in the description. Uh, so what's linked to the description for me is anchor.fm slash Riley Megafeed. What you can pretty Aren't much you call to say that louder every single time you say it. No, that that bit stopped a long time ago. But uh, um, Anchor.fm slash Riley Megafeed is the Riley podcast. Riley Megafeed. Megafeed. Riley Megafeed. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> it's kind of a dead feed right now. There's one more thing planned to come out on it, but after that, it's pretty much going to be dead. Um, but the main thing, it's kind of like my website, as it were, because it also has like all of my links in the description of the podcast feed. So it's like a place I can send people to get all of my shit. So, yeah, you can go there, and there are links to the Issue Crew there. So if you want to click a link in the description and get to the Issue Crew, you just have to go a couple links deep. Go to the Riley Mega Feed and then click on the Issue Crew link. And there you go. Um, and thank you all for listening. Uh, for Detour Ahead, I've been Riley. I've been, I've been Polo. And that's and been the, the show. Random candor. Talk to everybody. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> See you next time.